Hey guys, it's Byron here and welcome to Byron's Reviews. Today is the second episode of Request Month, the month dedicated to going over your requests. To continue from last week's video, we'll be going over two low budget B movies with humanoid robots as the main characters, Android Cop and Manborg. So, let's get this show on the road with Android Cop. Released in 2014, Android Cop is a film by possibly my favourite production company, The Asylum, and I don't think it takes a genius to figure out what it's a mockbuster of, the Robocop movie of the same year. At the back of the box it even says for all fans of Robocop. Well, at least it's honest. <laughs> the film is written and directed by Mark Atkins, a filmmaker who I've had a variety of different opinions about in the past, but after seeing more of his films such as Merlin and the War of the Dragons and Battle of Los Angeles, I'm starting to see him in a much more positive light. That said, let's go over a brief plot summary of Android Cop. In the futuristic year of 2037, police officer slash detective Hammond and his partner go into The Zone, an area of Los Angeles supposedly riddled with crime and radiation. However, during this mission, Hammond's partner is tragically gunned down and killed. Later, Hammond is given a new partner who just so happens to be an android. This android goes by many names, such as Officer Number One, Andy, and many other confusing things, but we'll just call him Android Cop for the sake of this review. And so, as this unlikely duo learn to get along, they are tasked to enter the zone once more. Now in terms of writing, I actually think Mark Atkins did a great job here. The plot may not be anything new, but I don't think that's a bad thing in this case, and I was never expecting it to be that original going into it. What we do get though is some very likeable characters with extremely well thought out motivations. For example, the protagonist Hammond, played by actor Michael J. White, hates machines, seeing as his partner was killed by one, and so working with Android Cop isn't easy, and that influences a lot of his actions throughout the film. Reinforcing a contrast between these two characters even further, Hammond doesn't tend to follow the rules, having a lone wolf kind of mentality, while Android Cop is literally programmed to follow the rules, and this creates some really interesting moments. What makes this even better is the chemistry between these two guys. They have some hilarious banter between each other, with lines such as, well, you're basically just a soda machine, and you're doing a good job of being mediocre cop. And in this regard, the dialogue is very strong. However, I do have a criticism about the dialogue at the same time. Unlike other Asylum films, which have large sections of dialogue dedicated to explaining, which I've dubbed as being scientific gibberish in previous videos, Android Cop doesn't really have this as much. And when it is there, it's woven into what the characters are actually doing a lot more seamlessly. On one side, this improves the already good pacing of the film and it doesn't waste time, but on the other side, it kind of can come across as a bit vague and hard to follow or understand at some points. That said, I don't think it's anything major and on a second viewing, I followed what was going on a lot better. I'd say that up until the film's climax, I was finding it to be a fun, enjoyable time, but nothing too memorable. But when the climax started taking place, that changed for the better. This is thanks to several well done, albeit debatably done to death twists near the end. These may have been cliche, but like I said earlier, I don't think that's that much of a bad thing, because with fantastic execution, I never saw these twists even coming. In fact, this talk of cliches reminds me of a video I did in the past, where I discussed whether they were inherently bad or not, and I'll link that in the description. God, that segue was forced. <laughs> I want to take this as an opportunity to give a shout out to a video response that was made to my video about cliches, and that is by a YouTuber called Bobby LaPaya. In his video, he argued that well execution can make cliches acceptable, and as I hinted at earlier, Android Cop is a great example of this being the case. I think it works for this film for A, just being familiar and enjoyable escapism, and B, it being very well executed. 
However, before we get too off topic, another thing that made the film's climax very good was just the suspense and how effective it was. I think it was so suspenseful because of the film's overarching messages and criticisms about technology. Here's the part where I look into Asylum films way too deeply. As is typical of these kind of sci-fi films such as iRobot or War Games, a lot of the elements of Android Cop are a metaphor for how technology can be used against us or how it can take us over. In Android Cop, this same trope is used to show authority figures such as police officers in a rather negative light. For example, trying not to give too much away from the ending, there is a part where the villainous corrupt police officers are using technology that the main characters are so dependent on to try and shut them down in their attempts to save the day. In this day and age, I feel that most of us too are dependent on technology, so I thought that this subtle message was quite poignant and very effective. This is just one example of how Android Cop creates a really interesting vision of the future. This is something I praised another Asylum film for too, Transmorphers, so I guess the Asylum are especially good at this. Android Cop achieves this with a really atmospheric grey colour palette, along with lots of high-tech flying vehicles flying around, and also, there are lots of rocky locations that look very run down that add to that effect too. Now, seeing as he's in the title of the film, let's take a look at the Android Cop himself. Now, with the helmet on, I'm going to be honest and say that he does look a bit silly. Not quite Hunter level silly from AVH Alien vs Hunter, but not far off. <laughs> However, many viewers may get a good laugh out of this helmet, with a so bad it's good kind of feel. That said, for the majority of the film, the android cop actually doesn't wear the helmet, so I guess they kind of knew it maybe looked a bit silly. That said, the rest of his costume is quite simple, but it looks good. What really makes the android cop work, though, is the performance given from Randy Wayne, who was very convincing playing a robot, especially with his facial expressions, which looked very emotionless and cool. In terms of the fight scenes of the film, because this is an action movie, I thought that they were choreographed fairly well. It probably did help though that the actor for Hammond, Michael J. White, is a famous martial artist, but he did a very good job. Now, there are many other things that this film did well, such as having a great and fitting score from Chris Canoe, which is very evident during what plays during the credits, and as well as that, the cinematography, also by Mark Atkins, is very solid. But that said, let's move on to the conclusion. All in all, I'd say that Android Cop falls into the category that most newer Asylum films do. This category is it just simply being very solid, well-made genre escapism, in this case for action or sci-fi fans. It's just one of those films that's good to chill out to. I've said this many, many times in the past and you're probably getting fed up of it, but it's worth mentioning that while it may not be the most original, for what it is, it just works well. Personally, I really like Android Cop and I'd say if you're a fan of the Asylum or B movies and want a cool action sci-fi flick, Android Cop is a good film to watch. Just quickly before we move on to Manborg, however, I just want to say something Android Cop really highlights for me. And this is how good the director, Mark Atkins, seems to be at action or sci-fi films. This was also really shown in the film Battle of Los Angeles, which I may even like more than Android Cop. So I'd love to see more films by him of those genres. Now though, it's time to check out Manborg. Manborg, directed by Stephen Kostansky from Astron 6, is an action sci-fi comedy that had a budget of only 1,000 Canadian dollars, which I just find to be unbelievable. Anyway, let's go over the plot summary. In the future, the humans of Earth wage a great war against the demon armies from Hell, led by the evil Count Draculon. When our hero's brother is tragically murdered, he himself is soon severely injured before being resurrected resurrected back to health in the form of a humanoid robot known as Manborg. As Manborg meets allies along the way and fights against Count Draculon's new corrupt evil society, he seeks his revenge. Manborg's writing, in my opinion, is fantastic, and this is just due to how gloriously cheesy it is. The whole story and pretty much every other element of this film is just a love letter to everything 80s and pretty much every sci-fi film out there. 
and this is so exaggerated, but to an amazing degree. When watching Manborg, I got vibes of Star Wars, Power Rangers, and lots of other things. And in terms of this 80s style I mentioned earlier, it heavily reminded me of another film released in 2015, directed by David Sandberg, Kung Fury. But Manborg released in 2011 came first, so I wonder if Kung Fury took some notes from Manborg. Now, similar to Android Cop, Manborg uses pretty much every cliche under the sun, if not even more so. From plot points such as the main character's brother being killed at the start, and morals such as the importance of family, there are many generic tropes used in this film, but they're used very intelligently. They are used in such an ironic and self-aware way that they come across as like a homage to the cliches themselves and how they've been used in many other films in the past. They seem to be used for comedic effect and when they happen, I found it hard to restrain myself from grinning. In terms of pacing, Manborg kept my attention from start to finish and it didn't go on any longer than it needed to. It has a very short runtime of only 71 minutes, but that was kind of a breath of fresh air to me, because I've seen many other films recently that feel like they have to force the runtime to 90 minutes, and because of that they add lots of unnecessary filler, and that can really damage the pacing. As much as I absolutely adore The Asylum, as you know, I feel like they often do this sometimes, and maybe they shouldn't always. Moving on though, possibly my favourite thing about the writing of Manborg is the characters. They are amazing. Not only do they have extremely lovable and distinct personalities that I remembered way after turning the film off, but they also have very solid and fitting character arcs. I know things like character arcs may seem like a weird thing to mention in a film so wacky and insane as this, but I was actually glad they're there. I don't want the film to forget that it is an actual film, and making it an actual story I think is a good thing. For example, each one of the main characters, except one maybe, had like an individual bad guy that was suited particularly to them, and they each had a dramatic backstory with that said enemy, which they really went to town with near the climax. And when this climax happened and everything was concluded, by the time the credits rolled, I was left very satisfied and happy. Speaking of villains, my favourite one is probably someone called The Baron. I thought he was absolutely hilarious, and when he was on screen, he stole the show. Another thing I found really funny about the Baron was how, with his costume, when he spoke, his mouth never really opened and closed properly, and I found this to be a very intentional and funny homage to many other films with rubber suit monsters that have the same issue. The makeup and costumes in this film were absolutely phenomenal, and it's probably the reason why the characters in this film were so distinguishable from each other. The costumes were gloriously goofy, but at the same time they were very detailed and really fit the futuristic world of the film. Look at Count Draculon, for instance, and tell me that he doesn't look badass. And after some further research, I have found out that the director, Stephen Kostansky, who was also the makeup artist on this film, has been the makeup artist on many, many other really big films, such as Suicide Squad and the upcoming remake of Stephen King's It. And after seeing his work on this film, I am so happy to see that the film industry has recognised his amazing talents. Also, the backgrounds and settings in the film look absolutely beautiful with really cool red and blue neon lights that really add to the 80s vibe and in general I just think the CGI which helped with all these backgrounds looks really good but this is far from the only method of special effect Manborg uses it also uses stop-motion animations lots of different practical effects and if you know me you know that I love it when films use a combination of different kinds of special effects. And because of this, everything in Manborg simply just looks cool. It's an absolute piece of art with lots of variety, and it creates such a distinct, immersive world. The vast majority of the movie was shot in front of a green screen, and after seeing some of the behind the scenes videos of this film, you really see how primitive this film's production really is. 
Comparing these unedited clips and the finished product of the film, it is really clear that most of the magic appeared to have happened in editing, and I just still can't believe they managed to do everything they did for 1,000 Canadian dollars. It's just so genius, and you have to be such a talented filmmaker to manage to squeeze that amount of good stuff out of such a small amount of money. Film-wise, anyway. I've been impressed by many other B-movies in terms of how well they make use of their budget, but Manborg has to take the cake, and I'd say that Steven Kostansky is a genius. But before we move on to the conclusion, I can't end this review without talking about a short film that played at the end of the movie. It was in the form of a fake trailer, and it is called Biocop. And seeing as we literally talked about Android Cop earlier in this video, it is so appropriate. We get to look at two Robocop mockbusters in one video. In the same 80s style as Manborg, Biocop follows a suicidal yet indestructible bioweapon monstrous slimy robot thing. And you know what, that's all you need to know about it. It's hilarious and it's great. Honestly, if I had the time, I'd go over many more things about Manborg or Biocop, such as the really cool musical score that really brings out the 80s vibe, and the many cheesy, subtle details that went into this film in general. But this video is getting long enough as it is, let's wrap it up and conclude. To conclude, I really struggled to find anything to criticise about Manborg, because when watching it, I was simply just having too much fun to do so. I'd say if you're unsure about whether you want to watch Manborg, watch that other film I mentioned earlier, Kung Fury first. It's free to watch on YouTube, which I'll link in the description. And I'd say, seeing as that's free, see it, and if you like it, you should like Manborg, because it's pretty much more of the same. So if you like cheesiness in films, if you like B-movies, and if you want to see something that's basically a parody of the sci-fi genre, then I'd highly recommend Manborg. It's awesome. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these reviews. Both of these films were requested by the YouTube user Jack Ripner, so thank you so much Jack for pointing me in the direction of these highly enjoyable films. And Jack Ripner, also thank you for the many great B-movie conversations we've had in the comments below. I've been really enjoying them and please keep them up. That said, I hope to see you again next week on Request Month, but until then, I will see you later. Bye! And I think Android Cobb is a... Android Cobb? Android Cord on the Cobb! <laughs> what the hell?